All right, guys, we are back for another episode of Permission Talk. And this one is really, really uh, exciting for me because of the guests that we have at the Permission Talk table. We have a new one at the table for the very first time. She is Glory Carrier herself, a wife, a mother, a poet. I mean, I could name everything. She just wrote a new book. Um, but she is, for me, one of the greatest and pivotal thought provokers of our generation. She's the one that doesn't mind giving the real on all things. And that is what this episode is all about. It's all about authenticity and us really understanding how to take off the layers of falsehood to walk in the fullness of what God has created us to be. So welcome to the Permission Talk table, the Jackie Hill Perry. How you doing, lady? Thank you, Dr. Jackie Green. I, <laughs> I love it. it. I know you don't walk out like all the fanfare, but you're doing some amazing things out here. And I just, I mean, I, I take my hat off to you. You really the one that got on the hat. But I'm feeling like I want people to just kind of get to know the Jackie behind the scenes. I know we're always hearing, which I mean, I feel like you do a really good job of. You're never putting on a Jackie of the stage, even on your social media. You're always kind of bringing us into real life, you know, what it looks like to have a husband and four kids. Just kind of tell me where you are in this season. Ah, man. Um, it's been an interesting season um, because it started off hard. You know, okay. it, it started off with the Lord uh, just showing me some ways that I was not as holy as I could be. And mm. I think there was a I think there was a level of de deception and blindness that I was carrying because my holiness looked holier than other people. Right. Like I wasn't, I wasn't out here smoking. I wasn't out here getting drunk. I wasn't doing none of that, but there was a casualness to my walk with God that he had to, to call out and correct. And so when I typed up, then my communication of God's word became much more clear, but also more authoritative and a little more spicy. And mm. <laughs> I think a lot of what people have seen me do and seen me address came out of God consecrating me. Right. Mm. Um, and so that's been a challenge because, I mean, it's produced a lot of fruit, but it's also brought consequences even in my friendships, even in the, the ministry partnerships. Right. Because people don't want people. Um, they don't want to be friends with people who who seem to be extra or extreme or people who feel like you should gouge the eye out that's caused you to sin. But at the same time, I feel I feel nearer to God. I feel his pre Ooh. pleasure. I feel his grace. I feel his power. And so that's where I am. I'm, I'm over here just trying to be faithful. <laughs> you just said so much. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> this is where I'm going I'm to I'm 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 hone in on this. You said that you tightened up and you had to consecrate yourself first in order for other, well, well, in order for you to first be able to give something, I guess, more pure, more holy in the way in which you desire to. What did tightening up look like practically? Because I know that there are many that are watching that want to live a more pleasing life to the Lord, that want to feel nearer in the way that you describe. What does tightening up look like? There was a lot of little stuff. So, so I'm going to back up. So when, when I first came to faith, you know, consecration feels a bit more extreme. I, I first come to faith is like stop watching porn stop uh masturbating stop smoking the blunts because that's idolatry what you doing stop going to the like it was all these big idols that i'm laying aside mm. but because i've been in christ a little over 10 years now it's little tweaks that the lord wants us to make and so for me a big part of it was music and entertainment mm. i was i was just open to being entertained by anything it just it didn't okay. matter how blasphemous it might have been i love the beat i love the sound and i was accommodating worldliness for the sake of enjoying it and what it was doing was it was it was it was discipling my heart to not pursue the things of god to the degree um that i should have and so when i shifted out of music that just had me tighten up in small things like even talking about people it's just like oh look at her shoes and it's like so is she an image bearer or not right like just 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 Jack. little tweaks little tweaks Woo. and it just it changed everything it changed everything 
What I hear you saying that I feel like many people, I think, leave out of the conversation is no different than like being casual or laziness is contagious and it leaks into every part of our life. So is discipline. Like the more we kind of like focus in or we hone in, the more sensitive we become to like what God likes and what he desires. And I think that's that's so much to what you speak about. But you talk about this music thing and it's kind of like one of the things that I really wanted to push into. So you're one of those people that will come for anything that is, I mean, all things culture. I mean, you talk about our your, the view of the Enneagram. You'll talk about uh, maybe not going to be at a concert. It's just all these things that a lot of people are getting to start feeling a little touchy about. Yeah. I want to ask two questions. Were you uh, what? What made you brave enough to do it? Hmm. And is that a? And I guess the second part of that. Um, is that a part of just you being real about where you are? Like, is that a part of your authenticity? That's good. That's a good question. Well, I, when I got saved, I came out the gate swinging, right? Okay. So when I, when I became a Christian, I immediately said, Hey, by the way, I was a lesbian two weeks ago, but God set me free and he could set you free too. Like I wasn't. I didn't even start out, out as a closet or coddling Christian. I, I came Ooh. out the gate. So I, I think I think a part of that is personality and I think a part of that is call. I, I think the Lord has wired me to be very direct, but I also think he has called me to provoke. But provoke for the sake of worship. And so we okay. have to address we have to address the golden calf so you can worship the right God. Like I have to do that. Um, so there's that. Um, I think when it comes to uh, the Beyonce situation, I didn't even want to talk about it. I really didn't because <laughs> another thing I don't like is I've, I've said this in different platforms, but people are starting to make a living off criticizing people. That like that's a fact. Like, it is like YouTube and TikToks and it's just like all they're doing is critiquing and criticizing. And the, the emphasis, is, emphasis is stop doing this. Stop sending this way. This person got a demon. This person got a Nephilim. Da, 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 da. Where there's no edification, there's no building up. There's no encouragement. Mm. There's no affirmation. So I didn't want to become one. I didn't even want to be presumed to be one of those people until the Lord says, say something. And I'm like, okay well if 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 i'm say it you got to be with me and so i prayed and i felt the lord tell me to do it and so i got on live and i felt his power so much so i'm sure you experience this often when i got off the live i felt depleted and i Ooh. often feel that way after i preached where i feel like power has went out from me and i was just like it was just alive it wasn't that deep but I, I think the I think the Lord was just communicating his word and that like if we want to be Christians for real, for real, we just have to be careful of what we engage with. It, it, it ain't legalism. It's just mindfulness. You know, Ooh. I think that even the whole the backside of the mindfulness, it really speaks to I'm a why girl. Like, I think many people do things all the time. They never ask themselves why, like why you feel like you're not able or why do you feel like you need to do that? And even when you talked about the reason for speaking out about Beyonce or even provoking your why behind it was for worship. I think we often are just doing stuff to do it. We don't know why we do what we do. When it comes to authenticity and you walking out this beauty of the call that you talk about, why would you say it's important? Why is authenticity important? <sighs> because God saved, when God saves us, he saves people. And what I mean is, he saves you. He so so that means he saves you as a person with a personality, with the past, with the history, with the context, culturally. Like even for me, God saved me, but in saving me, that means he's using a person who, who grew up in a single parent household, a person whose daddy barely liked them and loved them, a person who was molested, a person who was bullied, but also a person who was creatively gifted, a person who could communicate well, a person who read a lot of books. And so when God saved me, what he did was he uses all of that for his glory. So if I choose to be inauthentic, then I'm also dismissing the, the, the history and the personality and all the things that God has used to make me me. God doesn't want to save us and delete us. 
he has no intention of deleting us. He wants to bless what he's created us to be so that we can use it all for his glory. So I think to be inauthentic is to low-key deny the goodness that God has graced us in making us us. I don't know if that makes sense. It but, makes sense. <laughs> yeah. It and makes it's sense. A lot of work. I, it's a lot of work to be fake. It really is. That takes mm. a lot of energy. <laughs> takes a lot of effort but what i will ask though um because i know that you walk a really really fine line about not becoming self-absorbed or self-focused it always has to point back to the glory of the lord and i want to ask this question because i have seen as i have pushed the envelope on people living an authentic life or being the god created version of themselves many times we'll say like this is me and i get it he's not going to delete our personality and different things like that but he does refine us he sanctifies yeah. us how yeah. do we walk the, the balance of um, finding out what is real and what necessarily, what he might nec We sometimes call real just how we are. And sometimes yeah. how we are needs to be refined. So the yeah, question I'm right. asking is like, how do we find that balance of what Jesus actually desires and what we're just calling our real self? That's great. You're wise. So there's a difference <laughs> between, I, th I think we need to study what it means to walk by the flesh and what it means to walk by the spirit right yeah and so like the, the mindset on the flesh is death and so what is flesh flesh is is worldliness lust pride envy jealousy uh rage self-righteousness like all of that right and so there are ways in which our personalities serve the flesh and so somebody could say, oh, we're that like, I'm going to cut them off because that's just me. No, that's that's unforgiveness, which is a lack of love, which is also pride. So so you're not being off. You're not being authentic to yourself, per se. You're being authentic to the flesh. And so if God Ooh. tells you to put to death the flesh, then that's the part of you that needs to die. Right. But if you put on Christ, then you put on kindness, you put on compassion, you put on love. But the way I love is different than the way Jackie Gray loves. Right. Because you True. have a different personality to me you have a different voice than me you have a different context than me and so it doesn't mean i love less it just means i love differently and so i think that Ooh. really is what it is is what does it look like for you to walk by the flesh and what does it look like for you to walk by the spirit and that's what you need to figure out and then do what god said okay it's easy to say that and i love it and i totally agree <laughs> right yeah. this difference this difference that we carry i think becomes a real issue in us accepting one because of the thing you talked about like the disdain that it brings between relationships and who you used to rock with and how people how people perceive your difference how do you navigate the space of like jackie perry owning the beauty of this sanctification process and what god is bringing her into in light of the people that she lives in contact with one that's a part of christianity yeah. is that people ain't gonna like you and it's not necessarily personal it, it's they don't like the lord they don't want him they don't want to love him but because you're you're representing him in the way you live and the way you communicate then you are the easiest person to blame or to crucify right uh, because they wouldn't dare do it to Jesus and say, I don't like you, Jesus, but I don't like your servant. It, but but it's Jesus that comes to people like Paul and says, no, nah, if you if you persecute in the church, you're persecuting me. Right. And so even Jesus has to reveal that if you dislike my servants, then you also dislike me. So I think part of it is wreck like I've just reckoned with the reality that everybody isn't going to like me and everybody cannot walk with me because this road that I choose to be on is narrow and therefore hard. Yet, God has a crown for all his people who choose to be faithful, you know what I'm saying? And so I'm encouraged by the fact that I'm not doing none of this in vain. Like, like there will be a reward, like God does see me. And I resonate with like reading people like Jeremiah and reading people like uh who was that that uh was outside the mountain and he was mad at god and god was like i got 700 people that ain't about their knees to bail it was like elijah or somebody like that like reading <laughs> reading the prophets i think also gives you some encouragement to know that what you've been through ain't ain't it like you ain't the only one every mm -hmm. person that has ever followed god 
has went through times where people leave them because of their faithfulness. But it is what it is. Mm-hmm. I feel hard, like uh, but it is. I mean, it's hard. It's a hard truth. I would say that. Yeah. Like, but yeah. I will say. Um, someone that speaks with a level of confidence and um, sureness that you walk with has had to be perfected in love. In light of the rejection of man, there has had to be a shining and an affirmation of God's favor and his faithfulness. And even when you talked about like there is a reward, there is actually present day reward and that we have peace and we have joy in the middle of what we call suffering, so to speak. I don't think that we even, in our context, know the fullness of what people really experience when they suffer. But suffering to our degree, I do believe that today God still affirms, like, daughter, you choosing me matters to me. And I think Mm -hmm. that in and of itself is a reason to push beyond um, some of the dislike and the disdain. But in the whole thing about you being perfected in love, you talked a lot about, like, all that you lived through, the molestation, all of the different things that you talked about in your story. Um... I have seen a lot of times people live through traumas and they can never get over the trauma to get to the place of the beauty or the glory that I can present they see in your life. I want to talk a little bit about that. What helped you to overcome what you lived through to own the beauty of Jackie? Hey y'all, sorry for the interruption. I know you thought this was Dr. Jackie. No, 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 it is I, Keisha. But I'm here interrupting for a really good reason. I'm here to tell you to get the permission app. You guys, if you don't have it, you're missing out. There is so much happening. Community, exclusive, and the Let's Talk About It exclusive episodes that happen after every permission talk. Only live in the permission app. Make sure you go ahead, download today, join so you don't miss out. Okay, no, okay, now no, back, back to the show. Back to the show. I'm overcoming, so I think that yeah. one is seeing that healing might be lifelong for some of us. Um, that's one. I think two. I think the Lord has been really kind to me to give me good people. You know, so I think I think my husband is a big part of my healing process to to be married to a man that loves me despite my issue, just despite my history, despite the way my history can show up in how I interact and engage with him. But he still pursues me, still sees me, still cares about me. That's big to have somebody that loves you, like loves you. You know what I'm saying? But also- The real therapy, you. Also, yeah, like for real, for real. Like I think therapy also has, like therapy has not healed me but therapy made me self-aware, right? And so if my therapist would say, when you do this, you are pulling from this part of your trauma or this part of your past, and she would give me that and I would give it to God and say, okay, God, this is how, when I'm tr- I'm triggered by this or this affects me or I'm mean because of this or I'm, I'm all like, I would give it to him and say, now you help me, you sanctify me, you heal me, you comfort me, you do that work in me. And one of the, a really practical example is I was uh, working out, this probably December, and I was listening to this, uh, I like watching YouTube videos of like worship leaders leading like outside of concerts, like at churches or whatever, because they'd be like worshiping for like 40 minutes and they ain't get cut off. And so Miranda <laughs> Curtis, Miranda Curtis was at some church in like Toronto or something like that. And <laughs> she was just flowing and she kept saying that the Lord is a refuge, that he's a, a warrior, a fighter for his people. And I felt the Lord speak to me and say, you don't believe that I fi- I, I'm a fighter for you. You don't believe it. And you know why you don't believe Ooh. it? Because you have a guard up with everybody because you think that you are the better protector of yourself than I am, right? But that's trauma. Trauma has trained me to be hyper vigilant where I feel like I'm my refuge. I'm my strong tower. I'm my safe place. And so I've been processing like, okay, God, if you saying you a refuge, you have to you have to help me entrust myself to you to that degree where I'm able to be vulnerable, where I'm able to be weak, where I'm able to be gracious. And so there's also this sense in which God reveals, shows himself, and me and him have to work together by the power of the Holy Spirit so I can be more whole. Um, so that's that's part of it. <laughs> I like it. I think it's yeah. beautiful. I think people preach the whole uh, message of like Jesus in therapy. I don't think I've ever heard it um, kind of 
kind of demonstrate it in your own practical life that way. I think mm -hmm. oftentimes people go to therapy and they find out their issues, but they keep them as their issues and not it being them and God's issue to navigate yeah. together in partnership. And so yeah. um, I think you spoke a little bit through um, just kind of practically how you start to navigate. Like, God, you reveal that I'm not trusting you, but how do I? So, it, I mean, it, can you give me practically, like, is that he starts to give you a uh, opportunity to trust him more? What helps you to live out this new process of trusting him to be refuge for you? So very small, very, very practical. Um, how I choose friends is usually on the basis of I've observed you and therefore I believe you are trustworthy, but I've noticed that even my discernment as good as it may be is not flawless. And so I still ended up being friends with people that ultimately were not good for me. And so the question now is instead of me trusting my discernment, to lead me towards who I should choose as a friend, because I want friends that are keep that that feel safe. I want friends like all of that's good. You should want safe friends. But the question now is, God, who do you want me to be friends with? So now my vulnerability is not contingent on my observation. My vulnerability okay. is contingent on me bringing my observations to God and saying, "You pick who I'm friends with." That's what I mean is my, my hypervigilance has me observing super critical, all the things oh, she did this or oh, she said that oh, uh, maybe they're trustworthy. Maybe they're not. It's like, no, I've noticed it and I picked it up, but I'm going to take it to God in prayer and let him decide instead of my, my vigilance deciding for me. I think that's a big thing to make a decision to start to put your weight down on something else when you've been used to another way to me is the sanctification process but yeah. so few of us choose it enough to like we say we trust God but in reality our actions don't show proof of a change in trust many yeah. times um what I'll ask you is this if you are right now looking at a woman that's watching this podcast and she like Yep, God has revealed I've had my walls up or maybe I've been dealing with anger. He's pointed out something and she's saying I'm ready to take this off that I can be a better representation of who he actually created me to be. How do I take off this falsehood? What's your word to her? Huh. Uh, read the Bible. So <laughs> yes. even, for, even for me to put my confidence in God's ability to choose better friends for me than I can choose for myself. Is because I have a theological context of his sovereignty and of his goodness, right? If I have no context for sovereignty, then I don't, it, feel, it feels like life is more random than it is actually providential. So that's one. If I don't okay. have a context of his goodness, where Jesus says to the rich young ruler, why do you call me good? Only God is good. Now, Jesus has just told me something true about the nature of God. Jesus is not a liar. So if Jesus himself says that God is good, then he is good. So now that I have a basis that God is not only sovereign, but also good, I can entrust my future and my life to him. And I think the problem is a lot of people don't trust God because they don't know his word. And because they don't know his word, they don't know his nature. And because they don't know his nature, they don't even know how to trust him because he's just a stranger. Nobody trusts strangers. What stranger do you trust? Yeah. But that's how we have to view our life in God's scriptures. If we don't read his Bible looking for him in it, then he will remain a stranger and therefore we won't give him all the things that he actually deserves to have. And so that's what I would say is read your Bible and look for him in the text. What does it say about him? What, what does it say that he's done? What does it say that he's accomplished? What does it say that the future is? Is he coming back? Will he be reigning? Will be he be king? Who are the people he gonna judge? Will it be cowards? Will it be like, can I practice witchcraft and still make it in? Like, is, is that actually, have I read the Bible? That, that's what I meant, like get in your Bible and look for God. What I hear you saying is get to know him, like come into acquaintance with someone that, that is trustworthy. To your point, nobody trusts a stranger, but I am one that wants to always give practical context to the people watching. Some girl watching today, she don't know him like that. She hear what we're saying and it sounds good. Where does she start with reading the word? Where would you, where would you point her first? I think the book of John is helpful. Yeah. Um, because in John chapter 20, verse 31, he says, these, 
So basically all the book of John, these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, meaning that the entire book of John is written so that we will believe that he is the Messiah, that he is the one who has come to redeem his people. And so I think reading John gives you a sense of his lordship, his preeminence, his his value, right? Like we we see that it begins with in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And then it moves on to say, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So you're telling me that God became human and dwelt with us? Like if you meditate on that for 15 minutes, that's going to change how you worship. Very true. It just will. And so I would say, start with John. And not just mm-hmm. reading John like it's a piece of literature, but reading John like it's spiritually inspired. All of scripture is God-breathed, right? And so that means I need even the Holy Spirit to understand the words that the Holy Spirit gave. And sometimes that is the reason why we walk away from text not understanding them because we did not rely on God as we read it. So we even need his grace and his spirit to come with us and help us make sense of this book. And that's what he does. He's really good at that. I love that. Um, a, a thing that I say often, especially with mentoring with ladies, is like read the word until it reads you. I think too, many times we're just doing it to check a box, but it needs to come alive in a way that you see something different about yourself that can be changed and be more like the father. It, I mean, it's alive. It's active. Like it yeah. is not just words on a page. It's, it's. I mean, it's himself. And yeah. so I love that you bring that to offer a woman that is wanting change because ultimately without him, everything is behavior modification. And yeah. Until he steps in, you don't get true transformation. This is my last. I got two more. One. Okay. This is this is the last part about identity. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um. I feel like in watching you, I've been inspired by this mostly. If I look at anything, whether you're on a live, you're on a stage, you are. Um. I mean, anywhere. I, I, I'm reading your your uh, Devo book, Upon Awakening. There is just a Jackie Wave. How <laughs> did you get so? good at honing your voice like it's so concrete and it doesn't matter in what facet or form it shows up if you picked it up and they didn't have your name on it i would know that was jackie hill period how did you do that i'll tell you a situation i had that kind of helped so it's two things one it's my mama my my mother is if you met her she's one of those people she just knows who she is she just knows who she is and when she walks into a room, she does not shrink for anybody. If it, it like it, she she's just not going to change, right? And so I think observing a woman like that my entire life kind of that instilled something in me. It's like no, you who you are bring like when you walk in the room, it's you walking in the room. So you don't shrink wherever you go. So that's one. But two, I had a situation maybe I was before I was married. So I don't know twenty twelve. And this big um, blog space, that was back when everybody was reading blogs, they wanted me to write something. And, you know, at that time, I was only doing poetry and nobody really valued my voice as a teacher um, yet. And so it felt like a big opportunity. And so I wrote the blog and I was really excited. And they edited it and they edited it so much that it actually removed my voice and it didn't sound like me. And I remember that bothered me so deeply that somebody was reading something that had my name on it that actually didn't have my voice. And I Ooh. made a decision that day that nobody is going to edit me. Nobody is going to edit me. Now, that's not to say that I won't take correction. That's not to say that I won't be teachable. But it is say I'm still like I'm going to listen to critique, but I'm not going to change me in applying whatever your criticism was. And so I think that was huge. So now it's like if I go into... a a white evangelical space, I'm going to be myself. If I go into a a, a black space, I'm going to be myself. If I go on podcasts with people that don't love the Lord, I'm going to be myself. (laughs) Why? Because that, that gives God glory too for me to give him glory as myself, which goes back to your original question about authenticity. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. I'm gonna leave it. You say you do it and you, you're going to be yourself. Um, you talked about your mom and she's not going to change. Is there something underneath that make that makes her or makes you able to be that way? That's deep. I don't know. <laughs> I love I don't it. Know. I, I think some of it is personality. Okay. But I, I also, I wonder if some of it is contentment. 
if I had to really process out loud, I wonder if there's a sense in which I'm content with all that I am. And I don't mean that as in I'm content with the parts of me that need work. Cause I'm not yeah, content yeah. with that. Mm -hmm. But I am, I am content with God. You made me an introvert. You made me a thinker, but you've also made me a bit assertive, a bit direct. You made me observant. You made me discerning, but there's also this sin nature that, that can show up as arrogance, that can show up as a, a meanness, that can show up as in me isolating myself. But that's, that's, that's the lump of clay that I am. And so... I'm just entrusting myself to you to mold this clay and make this clay like where I look like you as I show up as myself. Um, yeah. I wonder if that's some of it. I just, I just recognize that that this is, it just, I am what I am. But what I hear you saying is that I actually like me. And I think a huh. lot of us have that's a hard good. time with, seriously. And I mean, they're like for a long time. I mean, my truth was, I, I thought I talked too fast. I thought I laughed too loud. I had so much criticism for me that I couldn't show up in a room as myself because in my mind, there was so much critique about it should be different. And God, if you had done it that way, until I got to the point of like country, loud, love everybody, so it's who I am. And I'm going to trust the Lord that he wants to refine. Yeah, refine. But as you refine, I'm going to embrace, which is the thing to me that gave me a greater level of power. So I love it. I think that was brilliant. The contentment was, piece. You see, this is why I like you. Because <laughs> you know, I, 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 I was like, should I share this with her privately? But I'm going to say, I'm going to say this now. I watch, I, I watch a lot of your stuff and there's a wisdom about you that feels different. Um, because you can, you, there's, there's a lot of people that have platforms that have mics that have pulpits who have things to share, but there's a level of shallowness to it that kind I get of it. gives me some insight on maybe the way they actually live their lives. But when I listen to you, there's some insight and some wisdom there. That's not from a book. Mm. It's, it's like, no, I think this person walks with God. And so Ooh. what they're giving you is coming from a legitimate place of worship, not just, oh, this sounds good, or this makes sense, or this is cool, or this gets like, and so that's what that, what you just did right there is what I'm talking about, <laughs> is that you, you pulling out something that like, you, yeah, that was good. <laughs> well, thank you. What a compliment. I appreciate it. That's huge from you. No, this is my last question. I'm gonna let you go. I know I said it like three times, I promise. Last no, closing. All right. I've been asking every one of the people that have been on the podcast, what's the secret sauce of the season? And you're so full. So I need to know for you particularly, what's the secret sauce for Jackie for this season? Abiding. Woo! Don't do that to me. That's my word. <laughs> That's my word. Because I'm going to tell you this story. Like maybe 20, it was before the pandemic. So it was probably 2018, 2019. I was really busy traveling a lot, writing, doing all the things. I didn't even have four kids yet, but I was, I was, I was busy and I was so exhausted and not just exhausted, but joyless, you know, where you get up to preach and you get up to minister and you just doing it cause you got to, but you don't really feel like it. And so you gotta, you gotta, you gotta fight to, to have affection for the ministry and all the things. And at the end of it, I almost had a panic attack. And I remember calling my therapist, and talking to my therapist about it and she kind of talked me through and I slowed down my pace. I limited the amount of engagements that I had, but that still didn't give me that kind of, uh, I can't, I can't explain it. That divine energy needed to accomplish all God had called me to do. And this year, Come on now, in, talk light to me. Me, in light of me putting aside the music, all of that is cool, but all of that came out of me really realizing how much I need God. And it wasn't an intellectual neediness. It was a visceral neediness. I knew that I knew that I needed God. And so what that did was it, it came, became less about, oh, I know I'm supposed to pray without ceasing. It's no, I can't, I have to pray without ceasing. For me to love my husband, for me to love my children, for me to pour into these people, for me to write this thing, for me to give out that, from, that God has called me to do too much for me to try to do it in my own strength. And so I need him. And it's Ooh. out of the abiding 
it's out of the abiding that much fruit has been born because Jesus said, if you abide in me, you will bear much fruit. And so our fruitfulness is very much contingent on our ability to abide in God. And we don't abide just for the sake of ministry. We don't, because that, that's a half-hearted abiding. We abide for our life. Ooh. We need him to live for him, right? Yeah, and yeah. So <laughs> that's the word, is abide. You read the podcast. That's all I got. Thank you. <laughs> and I would just say even more personally, you just gave a word from my heart. So I appreciate you. This was very fruitful, which speaks to the life of a body. And thank you for allowing this to just be overflow. I can tell this was not head, but it was heart. And those are my kind of people. So I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much for this time. I know you all were absolutely blessed by this uh, podcast. And I hope y'all stay tuned. Thank you, Dr. Jackie. Thank you. So I just wrapped up an episode of Permission Talk with the Jackie Hill Perry. When I tell you it was so fruitful, she gave a specific practical um, thing for anybody that's wanting to see change in your life. And my prayer is that we will all have a desire to see change and transformation happen, to read your word, because ultimately the thing that changes us is the changer, and that is God himself. And so my prayer is that if you have not had a... Um, regular rhythm of being in the word of God that you will commit today that every day even if it's five minutes get something that you read not just to check a box but read it until it reads you understanding that every scripture is God breathed and God inspired and we want to ultimately allow it into our life in order for us to see him and in light of seeing him see something different about ourselves love you and I would say my biggest point from watching or should I say having a conversation with Jackie that I have I mean, I told her that I admired about her the most. She is Jackie through and yeah. through. I mean, podcasts, white evangelicals in the black church, when she shows up with her mm. spouse, wherever you find her, whether her name is on it or not, if you hear her voice, you know it's her. Mm -hmm. And I was just asking her, like, how did that come to be? And she spoke to it being something to do with, like, her mama just, she's not going to be, and she's going to show up in the room as who she is. And I, I dug a little further, and I was like, no, 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 no. Like, what's underneath that? Like, what makes you all that way? And she said she really thinks it's contentment. And as I listened to her talk about the whole lump of clay thing, I really came to feel that it was really just her loving herself. Mm -hmm. And... I think it just all the more encourages me to learn to love myself more, to learn to nurture myself more. Mm -hmm. The things that I see in myself that can be refined good, but also see the beauty and mm -hmm. don't gloss over it. It's something that she and I are just like really leaning into. Like, no, I'm going to see the beauty in myself and I'm going to love and nurture that part more. All the more it will make me confident in any room I show up in. Well, why would I change what I love? Mm -hmm. And I think many times we're trying to alter or dumb down or even, you know, overstate things that we feel like aren't good enough. Mm -hmm. But think about if you thought it was good enough yeah. and letting mm -hmm. that be the focus. So that really changed me. Mm -hmm. And I love that you, because I know you're working on it, you allowed her to share her affirmation of you. You took it in. Mm -hmm. You didn't just bypass the moment, <laughs> which is the thing in which it kind of goes into just the ability for us to believe the things in which that's like, no, like, this is who you are, you know? Yeah. And like, like not being like, oh, no, 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 no. Like, no, like, take that. It's okay to own your identity, you know, mm -hmm. own, own those parts of who God created you to be. You ain't trying to make, you know, make no personality or anything, sure. but just, I don't know, just the beauty and pausing to really, like the next time somebody give you a compliment, mm -hmm. just take it. Yeah. Take say, it. I take it, say thank you, and you know, don't push it away or like, oh, this is just from, oh, you know, child, I got this from Walmart. It's like, just say <laughs> thank, thank you. you. You know, just But even further, that. one thing that you've been doing that I love and have even taken on is I'm writing it down. Oh, yeah. I think so often we ask God, like, who am I? Mm -hmm. and what's, but we don't treasure when he uses someone to speak to us about us because no one sees you better than the people outside of mm -hmm. you, you know? And I think I've been just way more uh, intentional about that. Like people saying that about me, that's not normal. Like yeah. the wisdom that I have is obviously an abnormality mm -hmm. because many people mention it. And I'm going to own that as a thing about myself, mm -hmm. the way I love, so to speak. And so I don't know, I usually get an activation inside of the podcast, which I'm giving you one now. I want you to take time today to write down things about yourself that people often say about you. And I want you to begin to own it. When people ask you like, who are you? Begin to let it be part of your language that you're not afraid to say about yourself rather than just always saying the critique start to own and have contentment with who you are mm -hmm.
hope that's helpful. Anything and I else? think too, just from a discovery perspective, when you I pray that you enjoyed today's episode. It was absolutely amazing. But what you just watched was something we like to call Let's Talk About It. Myself, PJ, and Keisha, we sit down after every episode and deep dive into what happened and really talk about the real stuff that we didn't get to talk about inside of the episode. And this content is only available inside of Permission World. So what you have to do in order to watch a full episode, you have to join the app. There's information on the screen right now. There's information in the description box. Make sure, make sure you jump in on the app. Speaking of which, don't click off yet. I want to show you a testimony of someone inside of Permission World already and how it's impacted her life. Check this out. My overall journey to Permission started this year in 2023. Um, after attending Fort City regularly and hearing about Permission and going to Permission Conference, um, I finally got into Permission World and then applied for permission room and was accepted and that's when i started using the permission app i will say that i've come to understand that permission is not just um, about daughterhood but it's also about sisterhood and the app has truly helped me not only gain sisters but stay connected to the community that i've built um, through permission room and just in general by having the app so uh, definitely the app has helped with that. The app also has helped uh, kind of keep me focused and on track. So I love that at any point during the day, I can just get on the app if I'm having a bad day or feeling anxious or anything. I can just get in the app and see all the things that people, my sisters are posting and sharing and the inspiration and all of that. So I love having access to my community, my tribe at the tip of my fingers. So Permission app has definitely helped and jump-started a change in my life forever.